Hi, I'm Luca Congedo and you're watching From GIS to Remote Sensing. This is the second tutorial about the use of the semi-automatic classification plugin for the classification of lens images. In particular, we are going to use the tools of the plugin for downloading and processing the images and we are going to create a lens cover classification and identifying the following lens cover classes uh, water, tap, vegetation and bare soil. Okay, so the first step of this tutorial is to download the lens of images. Uh, the semi-automatic classification plugin has a tool for downloading lens of images. In particular, you can reach this tool by clicking here the tools button. And also, I want to show you that you can reach the functions of the plugin from here. As you can see, there are a menu for all the functions of the plugin and you can download Landsat from here. But mm, before downloading the database it is useful to select a database directory because uh, uh, otherwise the database is downloaded inside the uh, plugin directory so if you update the plugin the database will be uh, deleted. So mm, we select a database directory and we save it in the user directory, for example. So we say Lancet DB and we click OK. So now that we have set the database directory, we can update the database. We check uh, to update only Lancet 8 because we uh, are downloading a Lancet 8 image. But of course, uh, you can download also the Landsat 4, 5 and 7 databases and of course this will require more time. And so now we click Update Database. We click Yes to this question and of course we uh, need an internet connection. And as you can see, the tool is downloading the database, the Landsat 8 database. Okay, so after a few seconds, depending on your uh, internet connection speed, we have downloaded the Landsat 8 database. Now we need to search for uh, our image. Uh, the tool allows for uh, searching uh, for date, for cloud cover, for uh, image ID, and of course we can also uh, search the geographically using the coordinates. Uh, in this particular tutorial, we are going to identify the image through uh, the Landsat ID. Uh, but of course, in other tutorials, I'm going to uh, show in more detail all the uh, tools uh, for downloading Landsat images. So, if we go to the tutorial web page, we can copy and paste the Landsat image ID that we need for this tutorial. The Landsat ID is this one. We can copy and paste it in the semi-automatic classification plugin here, in the image ID. And we can click Find Images. After a few seconds, the tool has found the image that we can also display in QJS. Clicking here, display image preview. Here in QJS, as you can see, we have a preview of the Landsat image. Of course, this is a very low resolution preview, but uh, you can see, for, for instance, if there are clouds in your area of interest, so it is very useful. So if this is the image that we want, we can uh, start the download. But first we, uh, we need to select uh, the bands that we need. In particular we uh, need just band uh, from 2 to 7, so we uncheck all the other Landsat bands. So. Uh, 
Now we can uh, download the image, but first we should uncheck these options. Click download images from list. Then we select the directory for downloading the image and now we select the desktop. Here in QGS you'll see the download progress. Of course this will require a few minutes depending on your internet connection because uh, as you can see uh, each lens a date band is about 50 megabytes. So after a few minutes you can see the tool is downloading uh, all the lens date bands. And when the download is finished, as you can hear, a uh, sound will uh, inform you that uh, the, all the lens date bands are downloaded. And if we open the directory, uh, as you can see, a new directory is uh, created with the same name of the Lancet ID and inside this uh, directory you can see that there are all the Lancet 8 bands and the metadata file that is, uh, it is useful for uh, processing the Lancet image in particular for the conversion from digital number to reflectance. But we are not loading these Lancet 8 bands in QGIS because we uh, need to perform the conversion to reflectance uh, first. So, um, in QJS we can remove, this is the preview that we have loaded before, we can remove this. Then we need the preprocessing tool of the plugin. Here in the Lancet preprocessing tool we can select the directory where the Lancet bands were downloaded, so this one, which is the same name of the Lancet ID. As you can see, uh, automatically the plugin has loaded uh, all the parameters from the metadata file uh, and we don't need to uh, edit these uh, uh, items. And in particular we need to uh, check this uh, uh, checkbox, apply those one atmospheric correction which is a, a particular atmospheric correction which is uh, image based and now we also uh, uncheck this checkbox create band set because I want to show you uh, how to create a band set uh, manually but of course if you leave this checkbox uh, you will uh, automatically have a band set created here but we are going to uh, come back to this later. So, uh, checking, apply those one atmospheric corrections, click the button perform conversion. Then we select where to save the bands converted to reflectance. Here we can create a directory here, for instance, and click OK. So, the process uh, of conversion will start and of course it can last a few minutes because we are converting the whole Lancet band uh, one by one and also applying this uh, atmospheric correction. So again the sound of the plugin uh, informs us that the process has completed and the bands, lensadate bands converted to uh, surface reflectance uh, using the DOS1 correction are automatically loaded in QGIS. So in this tutorial we are going to classify only a small subset of the lensed image. So uh, the next step is to clip the lensadate bands. Uh, in order to clip these uh, Lancet 8 bands uh, for our study area, uh, we need to uh, use a shapefile. So, so you can download the shapefile of the study area from the website of the user manual. From here, click 
and download the shapefile. Now we are going to extract the zip file and open the shapefile in QJS. So now we need to uh, open the tools, uh, the clip tool of the plugin. If we go to the tool clip multiple rasters, we need to click the button refresh list so we can see all the lens date bands converted to reflectance. Click select all because we need to keep uh, all the lens bands then we click uh, we check uh, this checkbox use shape file for clipping and we also need to click refresh list here because here we can see uh, the study area shape file uh, this way we are going to clip uh, all the lens bands uh, using this shape file and uh, save the clip the rasters in a new directory. And we click OK. So, as you can hear, the process of clipping has completed and uh, all the Lancet bands are loaded in QJS. If we zoom, we can see that all the Lancetate bands clipped as this prefix clip, and we can load the Lancetate, the original Lancetate bands from QJS. So now we have the Lancet bands clipped uh, for our study area. And the next step is to create the band set so that the plugin can uh, use these bands as an input for the classification. In the previous tutorial we have used a single multispectral raster, while in this tutorial we have uh, separate bands. So in order to create the band set we click here, the band set tool, and we need to add all these bands to the band set definition. So we click select all and click add the raster to set. As you can see all the bands are loaded in the band set definition. Uh, we need to define the center wavelength here and of course uh, if uh, the order of the bands is, uh, is wrong we, we could uh, uh, just arrange the order using these arrows. So now we need to set the center wavelength for each band and we can use, because uh, this is a lens at 8 band, we can use the quick wavelength settings from here and select lens at 8 and automatically each center wavelength is loaded for each uh, lens at band. So uh, now that we have defined a band set here, uh, we can see that uh, a band set uh, is defined as input image. So now we need to set the input train shape file and the input signature list file of the plugin. In the previous tutorial, I have shown you how to create a new shape file, a new training shape file, and a new signature list file. In this tutorial I want to show you how to load a previously saved training shape file and the previously created signature list file. For the training shape file we need to load the shape file with QJS. So now that we have loaded the training shape file here in QJS, we can we must click this button refresh list here and select, of course, we have just this train shape file loaded QJS 
and as you can see automatically all the regions of interest that are inside this friendship file, if we open the attribute table here, we can see that the same regions of interest are loaded in the Roy list here. For the signature list file we need to open the signature file XML that I've saved here. So if we open this we can see that all the signatures are loaded in the signature list. So now we need to create uh, the region of interest. In this tutorial we are going to uh, find four uh, macro classes uh, water with the macro class ID 1, the tap with the macro class ID 2, vegetation with the macro class ID 3, and bear soil with the macro class ID 4. And later I'll show you the difference between classes and macro classes and how it can be useful for the classification process. But now we are going back to QGIS and we can select the color composite of our image. In the previous tutorial I've already shown how to uh, create a color composite of a Landsat image. Uh, here, as you can see, uh, as I have selected a RGB color composite, a virtual raster is automatically created and loaded in QGIS. So, this virtual raster is created for this bandset. This is a temporary raster, so uh, when you, you close the QGIS project, this will be deleted. And as you can see, we can select one of these RGB color composite. But we can also create new color composite here by writing here the expression of the color composite. So, for instance, we can create the 3, 4, 6 color composite and press enter. And here this new color composite is added to the RGB list and we can quickly switch between the color composite with the mouse wheel over this list. So it, it is very uh, useful for highlighting the features in the image very quickly. And in particular, this color composite 346 is very useful for highlighting uh, urban areas. As you can see, uh, urban areas with this color composite are uh, colored purple. Uh, while this color composite 432 is particularly useful for highlighting vegetation. So switching this color composite uh, allows for a better discrimination of materials at the ground. And another plugin that could be useful in this uh, step of creation of regions of interest is the uh, Open Layers plugin. If you install this useful plugin, you, can, you could uh, add to the QJS project one uh, or more of these uh, layers, high resolution layers. Uh, for instance, now I'm uh, adding the OpenStreetMap layer. So, it can be useful for identifying features in the high resolution map that we, can, uh, we cannot identify clearly in the Lancet image. So, it is important to identify every uh, material at the ground. So, for instance, uh, large buildings, as you can see in this image, or roads as you can see in this other image. As you can see, the color composites are very useful for uh, discriminating uh, these features in the image. Uh, for instance, uh, the roads are not particularly uh, visible in the RGB uh, 321, while uh, they are very uh, visible in the RGB 432, uh, and especially uh, RGB 346. We can also identify small buildings and narrow roads, and which, uh, as you can see, uh, the pattern is uh, different from large buildings. 
We can also uh, identify uh, bare soil, uh, for instance, this uncultivated land, which in the RGB321 is uh, brown, while in the RGB432 this is particularly different from cultivated land, which is uh, red in this color composite. As you can see, uh, the RGB432 is uh, particularly useful for identifying uh, crops and uh, healthy vegetation. And as you can see, as I have clicked over the recreation tool, a number is displayed over the cursor. This number uh, is representative of the uh, NDVI, which is the Normalized Difference Vegetation Index. And as you can see, uh, this number is uh, higher over vegetation and is lower over uh, built-up areas uh, or bare soil. Uh, in a... So it is lower where uh, there is no vegetation. So in combination with the color composite and this uh, value uh, displayed uh, over the image, we can easily identify if uh, a pixel is vegetated or not. And we can click and uh, quickly create regions of interest. So, uh, for instance, if we see that NDVI is very low, uh, probably this is a built-up area. So, for instance, if we click here, and we create a region of interest here, and we increase the range radius value a little, we can click the redo button, and a new region of interest is created uh, with this new parameter. If we increase the value a little more, we click the redo button here, we can see that the region of interest is uh, becoming larger. So, uh, let's say that we are uh, satisfied with this uh, region of interest, so we select here our macro class ID, this is uh, grassland main, mainly, so the macro class is vegetation, and as class ID we need to set a class ID that is uh, different from the previously saved region, regions of interest. So we need to set here 5. And we can write here, for instance, grassland. Now we can save the region of interest. As you can see, a new region is loaded in the array list, and a new spectral signature is uh, calculated here in the signature list. We can see, for instance, the spectral signature of this region uh, of interest by clicking this button here. As you can see, there is a very high value here, which is in the near infrared, because it is uh, vegetation. We can also compare this spectral signature with another uh, spectral signature already loaded in the signature list, for instance, this other one of vegetation and we can see if we click here fit plot to data that there is a difference in the values because this previously saved spectral signature uh, was uh, calculated without the definition of the central wavelength of the Lancet band so what we need to do is to remove these four uh, spectral signatures already loaded uh, because the values are not compatible with the uh, new spectral signatures. For instance, if we uh, see the signature details, we can see that the values of the new spectral signature are decimal values, here all uh, lower than one, while the values of the previously saved spectral signatures are in the order of thousands. So we need to remove 
with this button the spectral signatures here. Of course, we can calculate the spectral signatures that we have removed uh, again uh, using this button Add to Signature. So if we click here, the process starts uh, calculating the spectral signatures. Of course, we need to set uh, the colors of the uh, classes again. But now, if we compare the vegetation and these other vegetation spectral signatures, we can see now that the values are compatible. We can remove the two spectral signatures from here. And now we can see that the spectral signatures are very similar. So now we can change the color here. We can assign new colors to the vegetation, to the water, and so on. And another useful feature of the plugin is that you can zoom to the region of interest by double clicking uh, the ROI list. So, for instance, if we double click the water uh, region, here we have zoomed directly to the same region of interest. If we double click over here, the built up region, we can zoom directly to this region of interest. So uh, now we need to create several region of interest. Now we are we have uh, only five regions, but we need to uh, create a region of interest for uh, every material at the ground. Uh, the more uh, regions are created, the, the, the better. This is because uh, the classification algorithm uh, will identify the similarity uh, between the spectral signatures uh, loaded here and the spectral signatures of individual pixels here. So for instance, if we want to display the spectral signatures of a pixel, for instance a pixel here, we just uh, right click over a pixel and a new spectral signature is calculated here with the macroclass information pixel and the color here is orange so we can see that this particular pixel uh, has a very low spectral signature uh, if we uh, click over a pixel that has a very high value of a normalized different vegetation index uh, for instance here with uh, 0 0.72 if we uh, right click here, we can see that a new pixel is uh, loaded in the spectral signature. Now maybe we should uh, change the color in order to display it better. And we can see that it is very similar to the spectral signature of vegetation that we have already uh, collected. So we don't need to create a new region of interest here. So we need to create more region of interest, uh, for instance for the built-up areas. Uh, so we can zoom over this area and we can see that this line is uh, a large rod. And we can switch the color composite so we can see the rods better and we can create a new region of interest here so click the recreation tool and click when we see a very low NDVI value we are probably uh, over this built up area so we click here and as you can see a new region of interest uh, which is uh, following the, the rod is created and now we can add the region of interest to the right list so the macro class for built up is 2 
you can see that if we uh, have already created some region of interest uh, in the macro class information here uh, as I start typing uh, the B of the built up we have the uh, list of macro classes uh, that we have already digitized so I can simply click here built up so it is a sort of auto complete uh, which can uh, is the, the process of creation of ROIs. Now I need to increase the class ID but I'm not doing it uh, because I want to show you also how to edit a region of interest that it is already saved. So for instance here I write rod and I save it here. So for instance if I have not uh, set a proper class ID here, I can edit uh, the ROI list uh, directly. So just click uh, over the class ID and I can increase the value so now it is uh, correct. I can do the same for the class ID in the signature list. So I click here over class ID and I, I can increase the value. Of course, I can also change the class information with a click and for instance, uh, say rod1. And uh, every change in the region of interest list here, it is also reported in the training ship file. So now that we have created several regions of interest, uh, we can uh, create a classification preview, uh, which is a way to assess uh, the quality of our spectral signatures, and in particular if uh, we have identified uh, all the materials at the ground. So here we can set the classification preview sites, we can say 500, this is the unit in pixels, and we can click here activate preview pointer. With a left click over the image we can see the classification preview using this algorithm. Uh, now we have used the minimum distance but we are going to use the spectral angle mapping uh, algorithm for the classification, so we change the algorithm here and we can click the redo button here and as you can see the classification preview is updated. Classification previews are uh, temporary rasters that are loaded in QJS in this group, class temp group, and all these rasters are deleted uh, after the QJS project is closed. So we can see for instance that uh, we have classified quite correctly the vegetation but we can see that uh, we have classified as built up also this area here uh, which is uh, probably not built up because uh, it is quite dark it is uh, an area in shadow so we need to create a region of interest over here and we can set for instance uh, as vegetation macro class and uh, we can set here trees in shadow and we can say the region of interest and calculate the spectral signature here now we change the color again and we can redo the classification preview uh, it is important that the creation of ROIs and the calculation of spectral signatures is an iterative process. So, uh, after the creation of a region of interest, it is important to evaluate the results uh, creating a classification preview. So, we click the redo button here. So, as you can see, the area that was previously classified as built up is now classified as vegetation. And if we, if we move uh, over the image, we can create other classification previews and see if the image is correctly classified. 
Now I have classified the uh, image, the, the preview, using the spectral angle mapping and using the class ID. Uh, this is because I have not checked this checkbox use macro class ID. If I check this checkbox, I'm going to classify uh, the image uh, using the spectral seek that was here, but the classification results will, will be uh, classified as macro classes. So if I click uh, redo, as you can see, the colors here are, uh, as you can see in the layers, the new classification is classified with uh, only with macro classes. And uh, although the spectral signatures are the same, we can see that the results are different. If we switch between the uh, classification preview using macro classes and classification preview using classes, we can see that, for instance, the built up area is classified as built up here, while in this classification we have a difference between uh, buildings and roads. So here you can see that uh, several pixels are classified as water because I have uh, erroneously uh, set a macro class ID uh, 1, which is the macro class for water. So uh, now what I need to do is to edit here the macro class ID and set the vegetation macro class ID which is 3 and the same for the spectral signatures and click uh, redo and now we can see that the pixels are correctly classified this is to show you that you can easily uh, change the macro class ID and information for ROIs or for signatures uh, directly in the region of interest list and in the spectral signature list. And now we can compare the preview results, for instance, with the high resolution data. Uh, I previously loaded our uh, OpenStreetMap here. So using this button show and hide. We can uh, quickly identify uh, if uh, we have uh, classified correctly urban areas or vegetation. And we can also see how uh, each spectral signature affects the classification results. Uh, for instance, if we uh, enable or disable a spectral signature here, uh, for instance, we can disable the spectral signature of built up the rods. We can click uh, the redo button here. We can see that the classification is uh, different. For instance, if we also uh, check their soil, we can see that all the pixels classified as bare soil are now classified as vegetation. And of course, now we are going to check all the spectral signatures here and perform another preview and so let's say that we are satisfied with the classification preview now we can create our uh, classification for the entire image so we click here the button perform classification we select a directory and we can create A new raster and we click save and after a few seconds as you can hear a sound inform us that uh, the classification for the whole image is completed again we can check the results with uh, our high resolution data and see if there are areas that are not uh, classified correctly. So well done, we have completed our second tutorial
Of course, we uh, would need uh, several regions of interest for uh, accurate uh, land cover classification. Well, that's all for this edition. If you have any questions or comments, please join the Facebook group or the Google Plus community of the semi-automatic classification plugin for QJS. Thank you for watching.